Okay, pet parents, are you guys ready to start talking about the clinical signs of diabetes in pets? Of course you are. Let's get him into it, Biscotti. The four classical clinical signs that we see when it comes to diabetes in pets include PUPD or polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, and then weight loss. And for those of you that that's enough to satisfy your curiosity, feel free to stop watching the video at this point. But for those of you who want more information on why we see these clinical signs, stick around. Okay, let's see how many of you we got left. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow, we actually kept a good chunk of you. Well, let's start talking about why we see these clinical signs in detail by going over the first two at the same time because they go hand in hand. The first two clinical signs are PUPD, or polyuria, which means increased urination. Oh, that feels good. And polydipsia, which means increased drinking. And the reason these two clinical signs go hand in hand is because they both have to do with something called renal threshold for glucose. And we're gonna explain renal threshold by using glucose as an example. So throughout the course of the day, our glucose levels in our blood or our blood sugar will go up and down. There's a certain level that once our blood sugar gets higher than that level, the kidneys will start kicking in and take the sugar out of our blood and filter it into the urine. And now this is where the magic happens because glucose is what's called an osmotically active compound, which means water tends to follow glucose. So with more glucose going into the urine, more water will go into the urine, more urine builds up, and then pets will have to urinate more because of that. And because more water is going into the urine, this will dehydrate pets and they will start drinking more to compensate. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. The third clinical sign is polyphagia, which is the nerd way of saying increase eating. Nom, 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 oh, nom. And this clinical sign happens because glucose is the body's number one fuel source and insulin is the hormone that delivers the glucose to our cells. And with a diabetic patient, because the insulin's not doing its job in delivering the glucose to the cells, the cells start to feel starved because they're not getting their favorite food. They then start sending off hunger signals, which cause the pet to eat more. The weight loss as a clinical sign I find catches people off guard because a lot of us think of obesity when it comes to diabetes. And the reason we do think of obesity with diabetes is because a diabetic patient has an excessive amount of glucose or sugar building up in their blood. And the way the body deals with that is by storing that extra glucose as fat. But there are two reasons why diabetic patients will initially lose weight and they both have to do with muscle. The first reason is that insulin is a very important hormone when it comes to protein synthesis. So in pets that are insulin deficient, muscle building is a little bit tricky. And the second reason is that because the cells are not getting glucose to use as a fuel source, the body starts breaking down muscle and other components that it can deliver to the cells without the use of insulin to be used as fuel. And dogs and cats can get a version of diabetic neuropathy, but that, my friends, is going to be a topic of conversation for a different video.